Good morning everyone and welcome to the Excitec BIM 360 surgery. So today is surgery number 13 and today we're going to take a look at BIM 360 coordinate and what we're going to do is we're just going to explore some of the features that um, you may not be aware of. So this is formerly BIM 360 glue so some people may be aware of the glue functionality. So I'm just going to show you what I've done so far in this project. Um, I've set up a model coordination space. This is done by going to the project admin area and you create a, on a model coordination folder in the settings and you'll see that I've created a team review space in the plans area and in the model coordination folder. So what I've done is I've uploaded some Revit projects into this model coordination folder and if we click into it you will see there is a whole host of files already sitting in there. So just explain what happens when we upload a Revit project. You will see that the file names look a little bit different. Um, my project name is SUR-EXEV1, so I've just got a standard naming convention. But you will see before that it says 3D sheet underscore. So what happens is the views that are in your Revit project also get imported into this coordination space. And that is because then we can use the 3D views to coordinate and view the model. So you will see that not only do all the sheets come in, we also get all the views that are part of that project. And that's why in this instance, there is only three models loaded in here, but all the different views and sheets and the 3D model all come in to this area. So what we can do is we can click as normal in docs and we can actually view a particular document. But what I'm going to do is switch the module into the coordinate area. So I've got model coordination. So there's sort of two aspects to this. There's one is where we can sort of coordinate models together. And then the second part is where we can use that coordination to look at the clashes within the model. But I'm going to concentrate on the models tab first of all. So this loads in all the different views that I've just discussed. Um, and what you can do is you can use a search feature if you want to just search for a particular um name of a file you will see that anything with 3d returns the search is there you also have over on the the right hand side the ability to start turning off and on different criteria because it's maybe quite common that you might have hundreds of different views and models in here so you can do it based upon contributor you can also do it on a company and on a upload date and you can also then click between whether it's just clashes or just your models so the way that it works is to coordinate models together you just simply select the corresponding view that you wish to look at so in this instance you'll see here that I'm going to look at the initial 3d view of the mechanical model and I click view and it will just allow me to load that model into the BIM 360 viewer and view it as normal and then once you're viewing a model, you can look at the bottom. So this is sort of new stuff that came out this week is we have a save view button and then we've got add and remove model. So the add and remove model just allows me to then coordinate more models into the one that I'm looking at. So if I want to start looking at, let's say, a different 3D view from the architectural model, I can just click it on, select and then 360 will coordinate both of them models together. So you can see I'm now viewing the mechanical and the architectural model. And the beauty of coordinate is that you've got all the functions that you normally have with the viewer. So I can just pull a section through it and you can see I can start to look in here. And you can see I've got the architectural content, but I've also now got the mechanical content. So at this stage, even with the section view added, I can go add another model. And I can say, actually, add in the structural model. I click select. And it's now added in the structural model. So now I can have the section through it. You will see that not only am I now looking at 
architectural. I've also, if we look up here, and I just you can see I've got the mechanical information, and now I've also got the structural webbed trusses. So you can see you can really get in, see what's happening, and just coordinate all them different disciplines together within the viewer. This came out this week where it's the ability to save the view. So what this will do is if you see back here in the coordination space, you've got all the different views. So if I want to go and create these as a set and I can say, OK, give me the architectural and also give me the structural. So that's the three models that I want to view in the set. Click view. And then what the view will do it will allow me to categorize them and save that as a view set so once this loads so I've got my three models loaded I'm going to go save view I can then give this a name so I'm just gonna say arch let's say plus MEP plus structure and then I can actually control the privacy on this. So I can say that this view, if it's private, will only be available to me and the project admins. Or I can say published, and I can make it available to all the teams. So I can go arch. I can pretty much put a description. So the same as that. Click save. And you will see that that has now saved that view. So when I click out, close down that particular coordination you will now see if I go to the views tab and click it you will now have this title so if I click it it will open up that view again only with them three models loaded so it's a really quick way as you get into large-scale coordination of models is that it would be a really really quick way of doing that you can also update the view so you can actually change. So if I was to, let's say, add in or remove something. So if I, let's say, add in the lobby section view, select it. It's now loading the four models together. I can then update the view, give it a different name if I wish, and then save and update. So if we close out of that, and let's take a look. So you can see that the privacy is set, the four models. If I click the actual line of the view, you will see that it gives me a list of what models are included within this view when it was created who created it I can open it or I can then delete it so if I close that down let's go back in and look at the models again we can take it all off so if we start looking at some of let's say the 3d plumbing uh, we get in typical column we view that now these models probably won't coordinate together there will just be two random views that are cut down within the model. So there's the two views that I've loaded. There's the column. And then I've taken in a view of the MEP. So what I could do there is click Save View. And I could go Plumbing and Column. Click Save. I can actually publish it. So then the rest of the team will have it. Click View. And there we go. So when we're in this view, you will see that you can also switch it in to a clash mode. You can see that we could then start to clash, but we'll come to clash in a little bit. And we can also look at the issues that are within that view. So if we come back out of this, and let's say we go to our view, which is architectural MEP and structure. So it's going to load my four models again. So there we have it. So within the viewer, you've got all the standard stuff that we have. You've got all the viewing tools, the model properties, all this stuff that you expect within the document management module where you can view documents it's the same within the coordination space as well you can see that if we click into issues there's none found but if we close out of this and we start to create some clashes so the models is where we can click and coordinate 
the different models together. And you'll see you've got a little button here. And it's already starting to calculate the clashes between the different models. But if we click into the clash tab, so what we can also now start to do, you'll see here that this matrix becomes quite big as all the different views come in. But if we look at, we'll clash the plumbing with the mechanical here, we click this view and it will open up and load the two models automatically. So you can see here we've got our two areas of concern. We zoom in here and we've got some pipe clashes that are happening in here. So you can see that it's got some generic clashes or I can click in and I can actually just find an area myself of concern. So let's say we look at this. And I'm gonna use a zoom window. Click in here and you can see that I've identified the clash. Now the way that the clashing works in 360 is that you can pick through the list or I can actually physically select objects. So I'm gonna pick that as my clash, add this and this to it. I'm then gonna say, so I've got some pipe clashes here. I'm gonna say that is an issue. I'm gonna pick and position my pin. I'm gonna say there's a pipe clash, there's four in total. You can assign it to a different project member. And then I'm gonna choose an issue date of here. So I'm gonna assign that to my colleague, Carl. Click create. And then it will create that issue and notify that person. So when we close out of this, you will see that that clash is now assigned to this person. So you can see here it is. They can click the linked models that are linked together. But if we look at the views and we click in and we look at the models that we have coordinated together, that issue will then be available within that view. So once these load, you can see if we click the issues tab, the issues will start to come through within the views if they're applicable. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you is that um, sort of the new model coordination is, is basically glue, how we take the models in, how we can look at them, and then how we can then save them into predefined views to allow you to quickly access and engage with the different project teams to coordinate and basically review and update your models to suit. So a pretty quick one today. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, join me again next week on the next BIM 360 surgery.